Today, we're going to have a little bit of fun with some electronics. Dirty the car. It's been ages, literally ages since I've sat in this thing and it's actually really kind of comfy. You know, it's nice and low and tight. It's good to be back. Anyway, uh, today I'm going to talk about um, the dashboard that I've got in the car and because most normal people, they've got a gauge cluster that comes with the car. This thing's a little different. I've uh, been running a Nexus 7 inch, I think, uh, Google, Android, Asus, whatever it is, uh, tablet, uh, hooked into the uh, Megasquirt 3 ECU. Uh, and that worked pretty well. Um, I was running the MS Droid software, great software. It was free, although there is a sort of paid premium option. Um, and it was really, really cool, snazzy stuff. You got to be able to, it was able to see all the sort of um, inputs and outputs and things that you wanted to monitor, whether it be um, coolant temperature, oil pressure, that sort of stuff. Uh, anything the ECU saw, you could pretty much program to display onto the uh, onto the dashboard. That said, it was running via Bluetooth originally, and it was a little bit laggy. Um, I ended up purchasing a OTG or on the go cable so that you could hook in a power source to the tablet and then also plug it into the ECU. Um, and I ran that for a little while as well. However, uh, I've decided none of that's good enough. I want to uh, throw together a Raspberry Pi 7 inch touchscreen hooked into, obviously, a uh, upside down Raspberry Pi. So uh, I've assembled these together, and so they come as two separate bits. Obviously, you don't always need to run a 7 inch display on a Raspberry Pi. And ended up with something like this. So the Raspberry Pi mounts onto the back. Um, I've made up or I've drawn up some uh, 3D printable brackets, which I'm going to use to mount to the uh, where I was previously mounting the 7 inch Nexus tablet thing. So I'll put together a separate video on how to assemble and install the software on this thing because it's a little bit, little bit fiddly. Uh, you've got to be familiar with Unix or Linux or whatever it is. Um, although if you can use Windows, you can probably just work this out. You follow the instructions and it's, it's fairly straightforward. Eff effectively, load up an SD card with the uh, OS that you download from their website, um, plug that in, boot up the uh, boot up the Raspberry Pi, it'll sort of install the OS, um, and then it'll load to a desktop, which from there you go and download and install Tuna Studio. Um, and that's kind of the cool thing with this, you're not having to use a Android type software, which I had to use on the dash, on the dash, on the uh, tablet. On this, you can use a Unix software, so there's a Unix version or a Linux version of uh, Tuna Studio, so you can check that on, and you've got the full Tuna Studio, which is really cool. Um, obviously, I've got a paid version, which gives you the extra features, the things like the, um, the auto-tune, um, and then I'm going to make it auto-load into a dash screen, which I've designed in Photoshop and things and put on here. So that way it'll have a nice, cool-looking dashboard. Um, yeah. It'll probably boot quicker than the Android too. Anyway, let me show you a bit of a close-up on the tablet, what I was running. Uh, I'll show you a bit more about this, and I'll mount it up and boot it up and hopefully connect it to the ECU for the first time as well. ta -da. Always a little bit uh, stressful. Stressful. Pulling that off and unplug my warning light. So I have this. Uh, it's just a bunch of LEDs wired into what is effectively the check engine light output on the ECU. 
So this is the old tablet, um, and I just had bought like some eBay $1 plastic ooh, case, and that case double-sided to a piece of blank board which I'd made it traced out in the shape of the um, the cluster, the OEM cluster. And that worked quite well, although, uh, as I mentioned, it was a bit slower, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, um, battery was crap, yada yada yada. Anyway. Well, I got it off, it's left a mess. We'll clean that up. Next thing I want to do is work out where this goes. So, it needs to go there. Uh, the actual Raspberry Pi does stick out past the uh, mounting pad slightly. Mounting pad, mounting bracket. Uh, so what I'm going to do is cut a bit of hole in here to allow that to sink in a little. And that'll sit flush. Let's remove this, clean up the gunk, work out where we need to put some holes. this fella. Uh, you can see I taped on the OTG cable here. Um, so we don't need that anymore. So. so. This is roughly our hole. Doesn't need to be precise. Let's cut. Please don't forget safety stuff. It's just a good idea, right? You don't want to end up like a moron with no eyeballs and earballs and face balls because you didn't wear this stuff. Okay? Let's cut. Super good, neat, but that just needs to go over the top. Uh, a little bit of acetone. Let's see if this cleans off the white sticky stuff. It's going to take the paint off as well, but we can repaint. So, all right, I've tapped a thread into the uh, holes in these in these brackets, and I mean, it's plastic, it's not really ideal for tapping a thread, but uh, it seems to work quite well. So, I'm pretty sure that'll hold. And look, if it doesn't, I suppose I can stick a nut on the other side of, the, uh, of these bolts, can't I? Uh, and then I've got a couple of washers. So we can, I don't know, have a bigger, slightly bigger hole here just to sort of give us a bit of wiggle room. Which I think I'll probably need given the lack of precision we've gone through here. So, it's all mounted up now and uh, it looks pretty cool actually. Uh, the got my bolts with my little uh, washers on there. Again, I could probably put nuts on there but I really don't think I need to. It's nice and tight. So we'll need to get a USB cable to the... There's a USB port in there we need to get a USB cable to. Um, yeah, we can find a way, just go through back the hole here and then loop it over. But that's it. I'll probably repaint this black again um, now that it's sort of been cleaned up and we've finished working with it. But first I'm going to go test this on the car and see how the hood and everything fits around it. Squeezy. Yeah, this fits anyway. I don't know if you can tell from the angle, it all fits perfect. Uh, tacks up under the hood here nicely. So it's all been painted up now and it looks really cool. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, and on the back, it's a bit manky looking, but the, uh, the bolt holes are all fairly nice. I had to make a notch out here for a USB cable to go in here, which goes into the ECU, and then I've also got a micro USB, which plugs into the display to power everything up. Um, and I guess that's the next thing we need to do. So we've got the power cable, 
which I'll feed in the back. Uh, we'll feed it in here. And then it needs to flip around and plug into the screen. And then there's jumper cables between the screen and the Raspberry Pi for uh, powering up the Pi itself. So it goes in like so. And then the uh, ECU plugs into the back of the Raspberry Pi. In there. back up on the car. Awesome. Can't quite see. Let me bring you over here. So this little lightning bolt icon I think is because the power level is a little low so we're probably going to get a higher amperage um, USB power supply. It's been a long time since I've flicked the power switch on this car so it's good to know it all still powers up. And you can see it's booted into Tuna Studio which is really cool. Um, now can we connect to the ECU? Detected something. Next. 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 Why won't it go next? Next. There we go. Uh, next. Move the throttle. Look, the gauge moves. Woo, fancy. And to finish it off, plug it back in. Beautiful. And this needs to plug in under here. That's awesome. And well, I guess that's it really. That sort of wraps things up. I'm pretty happy with the result. It looks really cool. Uh, I'm gonna go play now with some of the dash designs that I can put onto the actual uh, gauge cluster and go and make it auto zoom and auto, auto load and all that sort of thing. Um, we'll finish it up. Uh, if you wanna know how to do sort of the techie side of things, I've got another video on uh, the sort of assembly and software install of the Tuna Studio and the uh, Linux or Unix or whatever OS. Um, go check that video out. And anyway, that's it for this video. So. Thank you very much for watching. If this is your first time here and uh, you'd like to see more of this awesome MX-5 motorsport, race car, track day, whatever content, uh, be sure to sit, click subscribe. Uh, if you enjoyed the video and uh, you want to support me, give the video a thumbs up. Uh, you can also find us at Facebook and Instagram and the internets and all of that as Beavis Motorsport. You can Google us, you'll find us there. Uh, if you'd like to show and you want to help us out, pick up some merch on the website. Um, support me by buying my awesome MX-5 gear and uh, that's it for us and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.